Hey everybody, let's look at the consecutive odd and even integers. That's the first part of what we're doing today. Um, remember from last time, we had you know questions like, find three consecutive numbers or integers that blah, 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 and so on. And we went like this. We went, okay, well the first one we'll call x, the second one x plus one, the third one x plus two, and then so on, okay? This is slightly different because these are odd and even integers. Now, here's the most common mistake. Um, you know what, I'll tell you that in a second. Uh, when you have consecutive odd and even integers, then you can think of some, right? Here's some, one, three, five, seven, and so on. How about six, eight, 10, 12, and so on, okay? The difference is, whereas before we had, oh, consecutive integers that look like this, notice that no matter what they are, odd or even, there are always two, two integers between one even or odd and the next even or odd, okay? So in other words, if you're doing odds, there's always two, two, two between them. If you're doing evens, it's the same thing, two, two, two. Now, so, if they say three consecutive even, you're gonna go, okay, well, there's one I don't know. Well, the next one is gonna have to be two more, and the next one's gonna have to be two more than that, so that's x plus four, and so on, okay? A mistake that is made sometimes is that people look at this and they go, oh, even integers, there's three even integers, consecutive even integers. Oh, odd, odd integers, oh, that's x uh, plus one and x plus three because, no. These are odd numbers, one and three are, but that doesn't, you know, if you have an odd number, it doesn't matter if it's 71, the next odd integer is gonna be what? Right here, 73, right? The next one? 75, right? Okay, we don't do one and three just because one and three are odd numbers. You always do two and four because this is two more than that. This is four more than that and so on. So no matter what they call it, odd or even, you always use x, x plus two, x plus four, and so on. Okay, let's do one. Find three consecutive even integers. The sum of the first and second equals the sum of the first, third and negative 10. Okay, um, three consecutive even integers in other words, we're going to do this. There's an integer we don't know. There's the next one. It's, if it's even, the next one is two away, and the next one is four away. Okay, that's it. So the sum of the first and the second, well, that'll be x plus x plus two, equals the sum of the third and negative 10. Well, there's the third, and there's minus 10. So here we have two x plus two. There we have x minus six. And we can pull that over there, it becomes a positive x. Pull this over here, that's gonna be negative six minus two, which is negative eight, okay? Is that an integer? Yes. Is it even? Yes, that passes two tests, okay? So if they say three consecutive evens, if you're going from you know the left side of the number line going toward the right, the next one will be negative six, and the next one will be negative four. So that is your set of answers. All right, try another one. Three consecutive odd integers. Again, don't, again, don't get caught saying, "Oh, wait, it'll be x and then x plus one and x plus three and x plus five because one and three and five are odd numbers." No, doesn't matter what they are, odd or even. There are always two between them. So three consecutive odds. We know what that's going to be, right? X, x plus two, x plus four. All right. The sum of the first and the third. Let's do that. What's that going to be? X plus x plus four, okay? This is seven greater. In other words, if we're looking at our little seesaw, this is gonna be seven greater. So what needs to happen over here to make the right side match up with the left side, we're gonna to have to add seven, right? Okay, so we'll put seven plus whatever. The second decreased by 18 is that decreased by 18. Well, we can just go ahead and, uh, just go ahead and do two minus 18 when we know that's gonna be negative 16, okay? So here's our two x, here's our four. That equals x and then seven minus 16, negative nine, all right? X goes over here, I got an x. Um, that's gone, that's gone. Four goes over here, negative nine minus four is negative 13. So is it an integer? Yes, is it odd? Yes, okay, so that passes again the two smell tests, but uh, the next one's gonna be What's the next uh, negative, or excuse me, the next odd integer going to the right? Negative 11, right? And the last one, negative nine, there you go, okay? 
That's it. All right. Try one more. Find four consecutive odd integers. Oh, joy. Okay. So let's find their x. We got our x plus 2. We got our x plus 4. And then x plus 37. That's right. No, this is 6. Okay. Just checking to see if you're awake there. All right. The sum of the first and the fourth. All right. Well, I got our x plus x plus 6. We can just call it 2x plus 6. We know that. All right. And again, it's 25 greater. So over here, it's weighed down too much, which means we have to add 25 to the right side. The opposite of the third, whoa, that's kind of weird. All right, well, the opposite of x is negative x. The opposite of four is negative four. So we're gonna have 25 plus negative x and then minus four. So let's just go ahead and get it all in one swoop here. I bet you didn't know there were swoops in algebra one, there are, okay. Okay, now we're good. All right, so let's take a 2x here. Let's throw that over there. That gives us 3x, okay? I got a 25. I got a minus 4. That's 21. And if I go, okay, 6 over here. 21 minus 6 is 15. So x is going to be 5. Is it integer? Yes. Is it odd? Yes. Very odd. Okay. So 4 consecutive. Our answer is 5, 7, 9, and 11. You know what? Just for the heck of it. Let's just check and see if we are right at the very end. Let's see if you have time to test or whatever, okay? The sum of the first and the fourth, okay? Well, the sum of the first, that's five, and the fourth, that's 16, okay? All right? Is that 25 greater than the opposite of the third? Well, the opposite of the third is negative nine, all right? Well, you're on a number line, okay? You're at negative nine. How far do you have to go to get all the way to 16. Well, you have to go nine just to get to zero, right? So that's nine there. And then uh, nine plus 16, that's gonna be 25. We're in good shape because this is 25 greater than, we got it, okay. All right, second type of problem we're doing today is fraction and decimal word pro, Ooh, no, 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 nope. puzzles, puzzles, typo. Ignore this, ignore it, look away. Don't let your little brother and sister see that either. Okay. Okay. And here's how we do it. You can, uh, at this point, probably you've done so many of these problems where you just go, I'm taking this information and I'm make, turning this sentence into an algebra equation. Still works. If you want to just go ahead and write, uh, you know, a fraction equals a fraction and fill in the four blanks, you can do that too. Doesn't matter. All right. Well, let's look at it. Lopez used a fire iron. Okay, we don't care. We don't care if he used his mother's vacuum cleaner. But the ball covered only four-fifths of the required distance. If she hit the ball 112 yards, what was the required distance? In other words, our sentence, your job in these is to take this and go, the ball covered four-fifths of the distance, and that was 112 yards. So you should be saying 112 is four-fifths of some number. Or, yeah, I can just put that period there, okay. Or let's say what number. You can put that if you want to, okay. And again, you can turn this into an algebraic equation. You can go 112 is four-fifths of, multiply, some number x. And again, like most good-hearted Americans, I hate the x's on the right side. So I put them on the left side, okay. You know how to get rid of this. You just multiply by four, uh, five fourths, and then by five fourths, and let's see, that's your x. 112 times five, well, 100 times five is 500. 12 times five is 60. One times four is four, and then we get 140 as our answer, method one. If you don't like that method, you're not a good hearted American. That's all there is to it. You probably write your x's on the right side. Okay. Oh, you can, okay, we'll try another way. All right, here's the other way. E equals, there you go. Okay, I got four fifths. That's two numbers, it tells you right there. I got 112 and I got what? And those are my numbers, all right? Well, first question is to ask yourself is, she hits the ball 112 yards, right? Or he, Lopez, all right? But that's only the 
four fifths the distance. So the whole distance is more like you know this from here to there. So the distance we're looking for is more than 112. What does that tell you about, in other words, this is our first fraction, we know that. What does that tell you uh, about this fraction here, the 112 and the what, which we'll call x, oops, which we'll call x here, which means 112 has to be on the top, right? Because we know the bigger number is on the bottom. It needs to be longer because this smaller number is on top, bigger number is on the bottom. So cross multiply, 4 times x equals, well, lo and behold, 5 times 112, 560. And we'll just divide that by 4, and we get the same thing. Yoink, there we go. Okay? All right, same thing works here. Uh, Mackie guessed that the total was 30.24, but this was 7.2 times the total. What was the total? Okay. Well, what you're saying here is you're going, okay, he guessed that this was the total, 30. That was 7.2 times the total. Okay, so you're going, okay, in your head, you might be thinking 30.24 is 7 times, you know, some number. That's how you would think it. And you might even write it, write it if you want to, if it helps you, go right ahead. Okay, so again, let's just turn this into an equation. 30.24 is 7 times some number. Okay, now, the big question is here, again, are you a good-hearted American? Or are you some communist or something? Because if you're doing your x's on the right side, you know, I don't know. Okay, 7x equals 30.24. All right, uh, excuse me, that should be 7.2. 7.2 and 7.2, all right? So obviously we just divide by 7.2. And if you do the arithmetic and the long division and all that kind of jazz, you will get 4.2. That is the total, there we go. Okay, all right. That's when, let's just use it that way. All right, let's try another one. Last one. Three-fourths of the tickets had been sold, and there were 420 tickets. How many tickets were printed? Okay. Um, okay, you knew something was funny about that. Three-fourths of the tickets had been sold, and there were 420 tickets left. How many tickets were printed? Okay, now, if you're a visual learner, like all of us are, basically, except for some of us who are nasal learners. There's all the tickets you could say, right? Three-fourths of them had been sold, let's say. Those, that's three-fourths. Sold, 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 and sold. There were 420 tickets left. There you go. How many tickets were printed? Well, if three-fourths of them are sold, what fraction does this represent, obviously? One-fourth, right? So what you're going to, the question, the sentence you're going to say in your head is 420 is, you tell me, one-fourth of what number? There you go. Okay. So, again, 420 is one-fourth of what number? X. Okay. And just make sure you're one of these and you write it this way. Okay. All right, so that's an easy one. You just multiply by four, that's 420, and that's gonna be 1680, there we go. Okay, the trick is to get this you know, paragraph into a little sentence where you ask a question, basically, and you have this set up algebraically. And if you need a picture to do that, use a picture to do that, you can certainly do that, so there you go. Okay, all right, pause it and go ahead and try practice problem A. Okay, three consecutive even integers. There's the first one, there's the second one, there's the third one. The sum of the third, first and third. There's one and there's the third. So that's gonna be two x plus four. Equals the sum of the second and negative 14. Well, there's the second, that's my x. A two minus a 14 is negative 12, so that's your equation, okay? So we'll move the x over here, that turns into just one x. This 4 goes over here and becomes negative 4, so negative 12 minus 4 is negative 16. They want you to find 3 consecutive. That means you are going to go negative 14 and negative 12, and there you go. Okay, pause it and try B. Okay, golfer used a 6 iron. We don't care. 
ball travel only five to six of the required distance, which means the actual distance should have been longer. If the golfer hit it 180 yards, what was the required distance? Okay, so what you're saying is this. Here's the sentence. <clears throat> 180 is five-sixths of, we'll just call it what? That's your, that's your uh, sentence. So you can turn it into this, of course. 180 is five-sixths x, all right? And, okay, no communists out there now. 5, 6, x equals 180, all right? Multiply it by 6 over 5. Okay. And you'll get 1,080 over 5, which gives you 216. Method 1. You don't like that method? Fine. Do fraction equals fraction. Okay? I got one number, two numbers, three numbers, and then four numbers, right? We know the number we're looking for is longer than 180, right? So when we set up five over six, bigger numbers on bottom means our number we're looking for is on the bottom and there's our 180. So there's our five times X, six is times that, which is 1,080, which should look pretty familiar right there. We're dividing by five again, still is 216. All right, pause it, try C. Seven eighths. Seven eighths. This one should read. Seven eighths of the tickets had been sold, and there were 560 tickets left. How many tickets were printed? Well, okay. Well, again, if you want to do a you know a little whatever visual there, okay. There they are, sold, right? Okay, that's going to be seven eighths, okay. And there are 560 tickets left. Well, obviously that represents one eighth, right? So the sentence you make is 560 is one eighth of what? That's your question. Okay. All right. So 560 is one eighth of what? There you go. And of course, you're a good hearted American. So you, the X is on the left side and the 560 is there. And all you do is multiply by eight. And 56 times 8 is 448, then add a 0, and there you go. Okay. All right. Don't like that way? Fine. Fraction equals fraction. Okay. I got uh, 1 8 is what I'm looking for. I got 560. I got X, right? Okay. Well, there's my 1 8. Um, I know that if 560 is a number, you know doggone well, this number we sold is way more than 560. So since the bigger number is on the bottom, the bigger number is there. I uh, got 560 uh, over x, so 1 times x is 8 times 560, which is exactly the same thing. There we go. Okay. See you guys next time. Have a good day.